And then finally, question number 12. Hey Sebastian, really love your videos and I'm so happy you are going to start making the, your questions answered videos. I really would love it if you would answer this question on the rice fragrances. Can you tell us what they smell like and also give us multiple suggestions? That would be great. I will send you more questions for later videos, but I would really love to find out about this topic very soon. I love the idea of rice in perfumes and powdery perfumes intrigue me. Thank you so much for doing what you do and answering this question. So rice perfumes, are you a fan of this particular note in fragrance? It turns out I have several in the library here that I have uh, fragrances that feature this note. For me, rice definitely adds a powderiness. It's kind of associated with, for me, I get a powdered milk reaction to it. So there's a light lactonic undertone about it, a bit of nuttiness about it as well, and very, very powdery. Rice powder is something that I think my family uses, my mom uses, very sparingly in certain things, and I remember smelling it. But the other thing I like about rice is like I I make rice. I make Middle Eastern rice all the time and I absolutely love it. And I make it with vermicelli and it's with chicken broth. And sometimes I use a rice cooker, which is basically plain, but when you've ever made rice, either the way I make it on the stovetop or in a rice cooker, when you open it up after it's done, that steam, that smell is exactly what rice is, is supposed to smell like in fragrances. And I absolutely love it. It's kind of, um, earthy, a bit grassy, and of course a lightly nutty, but there's a very distinct smell that kind of is associated with powderiness as well. Really fantastic note, not, not many fragrances feature it, but I'm gonna share with you several fragrances uh, that feature rice as a note, and we're gonna start off with the least ricey fragrances and move on to the riciest, at least for me, that's how I experience them. First fragrance we're gonna talk about is Eta Libre de Orange's True Lust. This does feature rice as a note, and also leather, violet, rum, coconut, rose, osmanthus, ylang ylang, sandalwood, ambergris. So for me, it's mostly a violet leather fragrance, a bit makeup-y, but there's definitely that addition of rice to give you like a makeup powder effect in this particular fragrance. So it's Etat Libre de Orange, it's a unique fragrance from them, it's a bit sexy, there's a bit of an undertone of sweatiness here, and it smells super fantastic. All right, next fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about, again, we're gonna grab graduate towards the most riciest or the riciest fragrances. This is Floraiku One Umbrella for Two. It's mostly a gourmand. It features uh, notes that are kind of gourmand for me, but a bit spicy, a bit smoky, and definitely fruity as well with blackcurrant, genmachai tea, cedarwood, white musk, cyclamen, puffed rice, tea accord, blackcurrant bud. For me, it's not about the rice. Both of these fragrances, the True Lust and also the Floraiko, uh, Floraiku One Umbrella for Two are not about rice, but they definitely have a, you know, there's a presence there with the two uh, the fragrances. You can definitely experience it, but with uh, the Floraiku, you can experience it more than you can experience it with the uh, uh, True Lust. But here, it adds a kind of a puffy, powdery touch to the fragrance and a light smokiness and then, of course, course a little nuttiness as well. I think it's a really great fragrance. I never talk about this brand but this is a really delicious fragrance. Anybody a fan of this one? I like the whole really gourmand cookies and uh, fruity kind of uh, tea service kind of uh, experience that you get with one umbrella for two. And I always forget about it but it's really delicious fragrance. Moving on to the house of I Profumi di Frenze. It's Frangipani e Coco. This one right here. This is a, another fragrance that utilizes rice but not necessarily as big as the ones we're gonna to get to up at the front of the, the video. But definitely there's a rice presence here, but it features frangipani with coconut, rice, oranges, white flowers, olibanum, patchouli, amber, and geranium. But it's a fragrance called frangipani e coco, the frangipani flower, which is tropical, with coconut, which is also tropical. The rice pretty much for me adds powderiness here, but eventually you also have flowers. There's white flowers, there's citruses, light smokiness from olibanum, a bit earthy patchouli and amber, and some aromatic from um, the geranium note, which lightly has a little bit of a rosy mintiness there. So this is Frangipani Ikoko, the third fragrance. Uh, this next one might be a little tough to get, but this is a great rice fragrance. I'm putting it here at number four. It's a bit simplistic, but definitely it's a rice bomb. 
This is riso from the house of Tutto Tondo. Those of you that are in Italy, you'll have a really easy time getting this. This is probably like 45 euros. It's definitely very ricey. It's got rice, vanilla, musk, amber. The combination is great. It's fresh, it's bright, powdery, a bit nutty, and then also a little bit, uh, you know, grassy and earthy and powdery for sure. The, the rice is really distinct in this one, but I like it because there's a very unique, distinct rice smell that light nuttiness and grassiness is there, but also a bit like milkiness also. Like this milkiness comes in, but not necessarily like creamy, more like powdered milk touch with the, the riciness of this particular fragrance. A very, very great fragrance, and it's really inexpensive for 45 or something euros uh, for 100 ml. I think it's totally worth it and a very unique wearing experience with the rice notes. So this is Tutto Tonto Riso. Uh, let me know if you know that brand. Put a comment down so I can find out. So up next is a new house called Born to Stand Out and this is Dirty Rice, this one right here. And this one totally is rice in your face. It's rice and musk for me and lots of powder and it's basically imagine that steamy rice experience I was mentioning when you open up a brand new you know pot of rice or uh, you know a rice cooker and things like that. It's like the steam, that smell with the steam, it's basically here, but there's a lot more stuff happening here. Definitely loads of basmati rice, and I love this kind of rice. It's my favorite kind of rice to cook with. Uh, I love the smell of it, uh, especially, like I said, after it's steaming in the cooker or the rice cooker. But lots of musk here. There's some earthiness from vetiver. There's cetalox, which is kind of like the cousin of uh, ambroxan, so it, it kind of makes the fragrance linger on longer, but it's got cedar, there's milk, peony, sandalwood, all almonds, so a bit nuttiness, and I think that milk really does contribute to making the basmati rice come out with more of its milky touches that I've been mentioning, because there's something like a undertone of uh, powdered milkiness with basmati rice, but they've actually added the actual milk note in here to give it a bit of a creaminess. But very unique fragrance, a bit subdued, but uh, I think it's definitely worth trying, especially if you like the idea of rice and fragrance. This is uh, Born to Stand Out Dirty Rice. Uh, this next fragrance is in Alberto Moria's created fragrance. It's L'Artisan Parfumeur's Le Chant de Camargue. Uh, I've actually been to the Camargue in France, in the south of France. Very interesting place with flamingos of all things. I've seen flamingos down there. This features notes of French rice, sandalwood milk, and bergamot. So once again, but the rice is like in your face, very powdery, and also uh, they're adding sandalwood milk here, and I think I've always mentioned sandalwood is kind of milky lactonic. So I feel like sandalwood really, really, you know, like does really great meshed with the French rice. The rice is powdery, a bit nutty, as I said, a little grass grassiness there, that kind of light uh, uh, powdered milkiness that's also prominent when you're steaming the rice or cooking the rice. And it just really con complements the sandalwood milk that's in here. They work really wonderfully together. It kind of creates a powdery touch, not necessarily going towards the uh, powdered, uh, you know, make a powder effect, more like powdered milk for me, for sure, with a bit of tartness under there with the bergamot. Very unique fragrance. Definitely, if you like the idea of powder, definitely try Le Chant de Camargue from L'Artisan Parfumer. And this next one, I think, has to be here. This is Santal Basmati, this one right here from Affinescence. This is sandalwood and a creamy sandalwood, and we're talking about sandalwood in the last fragrance. Here we have sandalwood in your face, but also with basmati rice, cashmere and iris and patchouli. This is a fantastic fragrance. Very cozy, very woody, very milky, very powdery, and uh, really love, love, love uh, basmati rice and the way it smells after it's cooked. Here it's captured with sandalwood, and it's a very milky, creamy sandalwood, and definitely very cozy to wear uh, around the house or go out with. So this is Santal Basmati from Affinescence. And then my favorite rice fragrance, I would say, is uh, Teo Cabanel's Je ne sais quoi. This is so delicious. I think it's not all about rice because there's other things happening here, but rice is really in your face with this one. So rice, powdery with matcha, matcha tea, it's mate, sandalwood, tolu balsam, gayak wood, Haitian vetiver, violet leaves. What a great combination. This stuff works so well together. It's powdery, it's green, it's tea, it's kind of like that the powdered milk thing with the rice. There's the mate here. It's earthy. It's green, but it's got uh, balsamic touches and woody touches and earthy touches and of course some 
Ozonics thrown in. I think this is probably one of the best fragrances from this house. It really smells fantastic and definitely does a great job with featuring rice as a note here. This is Je ne sais quoi from Teo Cabanel. And that, that's the last rice fragrance I'm going to recommend. I highly recommend the last four rice fragrances I talked about if you want full in-your-face rice uh, experiences. Je ne sais quoi, La Chante de Camargue, uh, dirty rice, I should say five, uh, then uh, also Santal Basmati and also Riso. The last five uh, rice fragrances are definitely the riciest. Anyway, I hope that answers your question for rice fragrances, both of you that messaged me. Thank you so much.